All right, who's ready for 14 nanometer plus, 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 plus? Intel has officially announced that the 11th gen desktop processors, codenamed Rocketlate, will release the first quarter of 2021. There are no real other specs or details outside of what you might have been able to find in some leaks floating around. But the one thing that we know for sure is that these processors will support PCIe 4.0. So if you're one of the lucky few to get a new RTX 30 series card, you can now take full advantage of that if you aren't on Ryzen, as well as all the storage options floating around now. Speaking of NVIDIA, they have launched an investigation into one of their AIB partners, MSI, over the accusations of scalping the new RTX 3070s and 3080s. The story first broke over on r slash hardware subreddit, where the user rugged as f accused MSI of using a subsidiary called Starlit Partner to scalp the already limited 3070s and 3080s, all resell them on eBay for upwards of 1400 US dollars. The worst part is the demand is so high and the supply is so low for these 30 series cards that people were actually buying them at these exorbitant prices. Anyhow, the original poster substantiated their claims with evidence that Starlit Partner was literally only selling MSI GPUs and they self-proclaimed work closely with MSI. They also pointed out an MSI-owned Starlit Partners, and people who had received cards from the seller reported getting a like-new card, as in the box is still factory-sealed and everything. The post started making the rounds and quickly reached the socials of larger tech channels like Gamers Nexus, Hardware Bucks, and Linus Tech Tips, who began reaching out to NVIDIA and MSI. This caused NVIDIA to launch their own investigation into MSI. After all this started simmering, MSI finally commented saying, quote, Starlit Partner is an individual sales subsidiary working under MSI. They carry excess inventory and refurbished items that would not be given newly released products such as the GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs. As such, we have conducted an investigation and found out that an error allowed them to access inventory they were not permitted to handle. Starlet Partner has been instructed to contact the individual customer who purchased these GPUs and offer two options, return the product and receive a full refund, or a partial refund on the amount paid over MSI's MSRP. Moving forward, MSI will enforce stricter policies to avoid situations like this happening ever again. So here's kind of the rub. Would MSI have ever caught this or stopped this themselves if there wasn't such an uproar over it? Or are they now doing the right thing in terms of competence because they got caught? I guess that depends on how willing you are to trust MSI or any given company for that matter. And nothing about this is illegal, at least not in the US or most of Asia, but is undeniably a shitty thing to do. But this does beg the question if any other AIBs for NVIDIA are doing this, but are just hiding it a lot better and haven't gotten caught yet. Furthermore, we'll have to see if NVIDIA decides to take any punitive action against MSI, or if they expand an investigation to the rest of the partners to potentially uncover this further. Now, for something much less scandalous. SK Hynix, a premier South Korean memory maker and designer, has announced that DDR5 memory is here. SK Hynix announced back in November of 2018 that DDR5 was undergoing development, but predicted it could be up until five years before development was completed, and it began trickling into the enterprise space. Evidently, SK Hynix is running quite ahead of schedule. The company said that DDR5 has officially reached the mass production space, but will primarily be produced for enterprise spaces and uses at first. There are some notable upgrades over DDR4 to DDR5, DDR5 now provides transfer speeds of 4800 to 5600 megabits per second, which is around 1.8 times faster than DDR4. Furthermore, DDR5 runs at 1.1 volts, down from 1.2. Perhaps the most beneficial upgrade, however, is that it is refined and error correction code has gone, which SK Hynix now claims can now correct hyper-specific 1-bit errors. Once again, DDR5 will only be available for enterprise solutions for another couple of years, so it will be a while until it reaches the mass consumer desktop space, and becomes really standard just like DDR4 has been for the past 5 years or so. Finally, another week, another security flaw. Let's spin the wheel this week to find out which is affected this time. And it looks like Apple's on the chopping block. Well, kind of. 
In an article published on Mac Rumors, a team of researchers claimed that Apple's T2 security chip, the part that handles encrypted storage and secure boot on new Macs, could be exploited to allow hackers to gain full root access and kernel execution privileges. This opens up the device to some really neat things, like being infected by a keylogger in order to grab the decryption password. Furthermore, this exploit would also prevent Apple's remote security feature like Find My from being worked. But that's just a theory. A security theory. It doesn't have the same ring, does it? You see, all the stuff above is just theoretically possible. The team of people who claim all of the above haven't actually been able to do what they claim is theoretically possible. Wow, it's almost as if though Apple tests for these sort of things. The article from Mac Rumors is clickbait meant to stir up drama though, and the information from their sources was never properly analyzed. Hence, Mac Rumor has had to make several edits correcting all of their incorrect technical information because people don't know what they're talking about. That really highlights how horrible mainstream media is in parsing down science information. But I digress. The original article from Mac Rumors has had so many derivatives on other sites written from it that the team of researchers who originally announced the exploit added corrective details to their original post, so that the media couldn't just be spoo-fed everything. Furthermore, the original reporting actually misattributed the research, so good job. There's a reason some of these tech websites don't get invited to these events. <laughs> and with that, that's going to do it for this week's tech-related salt. Make sure to like the video, subscribe for more tech content, and hit that notification bell. Follow us on Twitter at tech underscore four underscore thought. And if video games are more of your thing, make sure to check out our affiliates, cultureofgaming.com for all the latest gaming news, reviews, and opinion pieces. See you next time.